Okay. Uh, hello, class. Uh, for my grade nine class, I am doing. Uh, the question was: Choose an everyday task or activity that a typical First Nations person would do that revolves around statistics and probability. So, for my project, I chose the game Stick Dice. Now, Stick Dice is a very fun game, and I'll get into it as the presentation moves on. All right. So, what is Stick Dice? Stick Dice is a fun game where you get to throw tongue depressors on the ground and see what they come up with. Um, Stick Dice is an Aboriginal game that relies heavily on chance and probability. Uh, in Stick Dice, two players take turns throwing popsicle sticks in the air. One of the sides of the stick is colored, as is shown, and the other is blank. Now, each player, it relies on patterns, and depending on the pattern you get is how many points you get. So if you get half on one side, so half blank and half colored, you get one point. And if you get all on one side, either blank or colored, you get two points. And how this works is that anything else doesn't count, and your goal is to get to ten points. Now, if you have four and two, or um, all but one, you get zero points for that. And how it works is you have these counting sticks if you're playing with two players. And the counting sticks, I use toothpicks, but it can be used uh, as whatever you want, and this just keeps uh, count of the points. Now these points are um, basically just symbolizing how many you know, counting sticks you can have. And the reason why you have sticks is because once you run, up, run out of all the sticks, you start taking the other player's pile of sticks when you get points. And you're trying to get the player with 10 sticks, so yep, let's say you guys have 5 and 5, if someone wins, the other person only has 4 sticks instead of 5. So you're trying to get to 10 sticks. Now as you can see, this game may take a long time. First of all, we're going to talk about the origin. Now, First Nation Stick Days came from the Pomo Indians of California. Uh, I don't know much about the Pomo Indians, but I, all I know is that they were known for the complex bead weaving. So they had very intricate patterns, and a lot of times the patterns would be um, put onto the colored side of the stick. Now, for simplicity purposes, all I do is put a line, but it would be a lot more elaborate if uh, it was a traditional First Nations game. Uh, now, traditionally, the stick dice was wood uh, with a burned etching uh, for the pattern, and the counting sticks were twigs. But now people use popsicle sticks for the stick dice and toothpicks for the counting sticks just because it's a lot easier to come by. Okay, now this is how it relates to math. This was statistics because everything is based on the combination of sticks. There are only a set, there's a total of seven combinations uh, that you can get. And uh, only three of them count towards points, the two blanks, and the half and half. This means you only have a 43% chance of getting any points or getting a counting stick. So you only have a 43% chance to even get points. The other, um, the other 57% of the time, it won't even count as points, theoretically. A 40% chance to get half and half, which gives you one point, and a 29% chance to get all on one side, which gives you two points. Of course, this was only theoretical, so I decided to test it. Now, before I show you my results and when I tested it, we're going to try out this game. So all of you should have stick dice in front of you, uh, depressors, and uh, half, half of the one side should be colored. And then the other half should be blank. And what you guys are going to do is everyone's going to take, um, take turns, try to throw them as fast as you can, uh, and count what you get. So, like I said, all on one side, two points, half and half, one point. And the first person to get to ten points wins. And you're just going to keep throwing them up until you've got all 10 points. So, ready? Go. That's the best game ever. Yes, best game ever. This game is so great, there's nothing better than hurling popsicle sticks toward your hard desk and seeing what you come up with. Now I'm going to show you what I came up with when I played the game. And so I had to play this game by myself. And after playing the game, it took me 24 rolls to get the total of 10 points. Only 37.5% of the rolls did I even get points on the board. And 62.5% of them, I did not. And I only got a score of 2 points once out of all the times I rolled. So, you know, you guys may have found it's a lot more common to get 2 points. For myself, I only got it once and I think that was all colored. The most popular result was four colored and two blank, which happened nine times, which is 37.5%. Sadly, this result did not count towards points. So for some reason, I kept getting um, four up and then two blank, and it just kept occurring over and over again. And the only thing I can think of is it's the way I tossed it or the way I kept rolling it. Uh, the, least, the least result was tied between all sticks blank and all but one sticks blank, which each happened only one time, which is 4% of the time. But conclusion, stick dice relies heavily on probability because all it is is chance. It only relies on chance. There is no apparent strategy to this game, which means it can go on for hours, depending on the certain combinations you get. 
By myself, it only took 24 rolls to win. With another person, it could take double that, triple that, or, sh or even shorter. All of it relies on if the player scores the right combinations at the right time. Some of the problems that you can encounter during the game is how you throw the stick dice and how it hits the table would all affect the difference in data and the difference in results that would come out. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for playing the game. And peace